Uh, Detective, do you have a copy of your report and your letters in this case up there? Yes, sir, I do. All right. Um, what is an investigative letter and, and why did you prepare one in this case? Uh, we prepare one in any homicide case we work on. It's document what we did during each case um, and any evidence related to that. And so it just explains your involvement here? Yes. I mean, obviously in this case, this was two years ago. I wouldn't remember every single detail about what I did, so we try to document that. Okay. And then so when I'm asking you questions, if you would, just speak from your memory, but if you need to refresh your memory by glancing at your report, you can do that uh, throughout the testimony here. Yes, sir. Um, so, do you recall who the three civilian individuals were uh, present at the scene, aside from the officers? I, I mean, if I can look at my letter, that's that's how I know who they are. Is sure. that okay? You may. Yeah. Uh, Robert Hayes, Tanya Taylor, and Michael Mead. <coughs> and did you and you interviewed those them at the scene? Yes. Did they all come back to the police station later to do interviews? No, they didn't. Only, only um, Mr. Hayes and Ms. Taylor. Okay. Did you conduct, I know you said you spoke to Officer Maybody, but did you also conduct interviews at the scene with other officers? Yes, I did. What is the purpose of that? Uh, to get any information they have or anything they saw that we couldn't see because we weren't there. I mean, in this case, to be specific, there was a victim that was removed for first aid purposes and taken to the hospital for treatment. Um, so they got to see the scene the way it was when they arrived. We got to see the scene after he had been removed. Um, so we like to ask if things have been moved around or if anything's been removed from the scene. And based on your investigation there initially at the scene, were you able to determine whether or not things had been moved around inside the apartment? Um, the officer stated to me that, that nothing, they didn't move anything or they didn't see any firearms. When did you look around the apartment? Briefly. Did you see any firearms? No. Did you see any other weapons? Not, not anything that stuck out to me, no. And so at that point, you talked to the folks there, you talked to the officers and the people there. At that point in your investigation, did you have sort of an idea about what that scenario might have been or how you were going to conduct your investigation to try to figure out what happened? It was very early in the investigation. We had hardly any information at all. Um, so no, there was no certain direction we were going. We were still in the fact-finding stages of the investigation. Okay. And prior to searching the apartment, um, after the initial scene, what did you do in order to search it? Um, another detective drafted a search warrant and got that approved um, by a judge after he listed the probable cause that we that we had to go into that residence and, and search or collect evidence related to this incident. And so you obtained a search warrant prior to executing that and going back? I did not personally, but another detective did, yes. And so later, it was later on that evening when you interviewed Robert Hayes and Tanya Taylor? Yes, the reason they asked not to come back to the office at that time is they explained they had a funeral visitation to go to of a friend. Um, so they departed the scene, which they were free to leave, and they returned back to the homicide office later that evening. And at that point, were, were they on a, like a suspect list or just people you were interested in? Or what was your purpose of following up with them? Well, they were 911 callers, which is very important to the case. They also had a relationship or knew the victims, so any information could help our case. Um, again, at that point, it's so early in the investigation, we don't have suspects established, and we don't have people, you know, ruled out as suspects either. And after you conducted interviews with Mr. Hayes and Ms. Taylor, were you able to include or exclude them as suspects in the case? At, at that point, I wasn't the lead investigator. I didn't have all the information. I just interviewed them and shared that with Detective Royce as the lead investigator. So you, you passed on that information to him? Yes, I did. Did you interview any other witnesses in this case? Or were you present with uh, for any other interviews? Um, a much later period of time, 
there was a, a person brought to the homicide office that stated they had information about the case in June of 2016. Um, were you present for any forensic examinations in this case? Yes. Um, on May, is it all right if I look at my letter for them? Yes. Mm -hmm. On May 19th of 2016, myself and Detective Yolanda Baker um, went to the University of Louisville Hospital. Um, Detective Royce had already arranged for a nurse to perform a forensic evaluation and he wasn't available at that time so we we went to execute the warrant because that also requires a search warrant and what was that search warrant for um, for nurse Sanders to visit or to examine the, vi the living victim in this case to document any injuries with uh, photographs specifically uh, detective Royce asked me to see if the nurse had any conclusions about the possible range and path of the gunshot wound um, <coughs> And type of injuries that he had. And at that point, was Mr. Wilson verbal? Not at that point, no. Um, did you collect any evidence from him? We did collect buccal swabs for the purposes of obtaining his DNA. Um, and I, the nurse collected them. I took custody of that and transported that to our crime scene unit where I transferred custody of that. And so buccal swabs are to get DNA, but what is that? How does that process work? simply a longer medical q-tip and they swipe it inside the cheeks and that's how it's collected and y'all collected that from mr wilson that day yes we did And you mentioned the other person that came forward with information on this case. Um, who was that individual? An Edward, I'll have to spell his last name, N-U-A-N-E-Z, Jr. And based on the information that he provided to law enforcement. Can I approach? Yes. 